Welcome to day two of Walks and Talks where I leave my work in my computer and I walk around uh, my pool just to get uh, my heart rate up and to satisfy my Fitbit that reminds me several times a day to help me get to my goal of 10,000 steps. In fact, about probably 30 or 40 steps away from hitting my goal for today. Uh, in, any, in any event, today I've been thinking about crypto a lot only because I missed uh, the SALT conference uh, this year. I was there the last time they had it in 2019 in Vegas. Uh, awesome conference, had a great time, met a lot of people. Um, this year, they, you know, this, the theme at SALT was pretty much about uh, crypto and, and the economy. Uh, speaking of which, I think those two are very, very interconnected. Uh, let me explain why I think so. Um, so right now, um, there are a couple of bills that we're waiting to pass. Uh, one is the reconciliation bill or the Build Back Better bill, which is uh, right now at three and a half trillion dollars. Um, uh, and then there is the uh, 550 billion dollar infrastructure uh, bill that has bipartisan support. So that's probably going to pass. The Build Back Better one is probably not going to pass at three and a half trillion, but that will most likely pass in my view at about two trillion. That's the consensus that I've been reading about where both Republicans and Democrats might come to some sort of an agreement. By the way, that number, this is what uh, a lot of people forget, is approximately at two trillion is approximately 10% of our country's GDP, of the US GDP. So um, that's a lot of money, guys. The inflation that if once that money hits in, in circulation, when you add to the fact that right now, those that are unemployed um, are less than the number of jobs that are open. So we have more job openings than we have unemployed people in America, okay? You add to that the kind of money that we're gonna be pumping in to the system, I think we're gonna get uh, a serious inflation problem unless uh, people see it the way that I see it and others see it uh, in the crypto com community where if you put some of that money away and keep it away from the circulation, you're going to get a much better, a softer landing, if you will. Um, or else hyperinflation is not out of, the, uh, out of the realm of possibility in my view. Um, so the argument against crypto from the banking industry Visa, MasterCard, America was just discovering all the banks that benefit by, by partnering with them uh, is that the US dollar is going to be weakened uh, by cryptocurrency. Okay, but here's my counter argument to that. I think it's going to benefit, the US currency is going to benefit, the dollar will benefit by cryptocurrency going through the roof. Right now, cryptocurrency is a $2 trillion industry, okay? We've got about a trillion for Bitcoin, about 440 billion for Ethereum. Then you have like Cardano at 79 billion. You have Ripple or XRP, the ticker, uh, at about 51 billion. You have Dogecoin at $32 billion. The last one is like the one that Mark Cuban was talking about and obviously, you know, Elon Musk has talked about. Um, so you have serious money that's been put into crypto already. So that, that, you know, is already a fact, okay? So to those who don't see the value of cryptocurrency at this point, at this level in the game, if you don't understand $2 trillion, I mean, just to put it in perspective, Ford, the company has about a $50 billion market, market cap, if I'm not mistaken. If I am mistaken, put it in the comments, guys. But I don't think I am. Um, so <laughs> think about that for a minute. Ripple is worth more than Ford, okay? So there's some serious money in crypto. Uh, and that's not going away. In fact, I think, I think, ready? Don't quote me on this. I could be a million percent wrong, but I think we get to 10x the current market cap of cryptocurrency. I'm going to explain why before you, the pitchfork goes over those gates and hits me right in my head. Okay, just let me, give me a minute. Let me explain. And I think we're going to 2x the market cap of gold, which is at around $11.5 trillion. Okay, let me explain why. Okay, no pitchforks. 
Okay. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. No pitchforks yet. Okay. So let me explain why. You have right now 35 companies throughout the world that have invested in any type of cryptocurrency, mainly Bitcoin. Okay. 30, 30, less than 35. Maybe it is exactly 35. Okay. I mean, these are companies that you, you know, some of them you might know, like obviously everybody knows Tesla, right? MicroStrategy, Galaxy Digital, Mike Novogratz's firm. By the way, Mike Novogratz is someone I argued with a little bit at the SALT conference. Nice guy, though, very flashy, he has an incredible set of uh, uh, cool looking blazers and a very, very nice Gulfstream G550. Has done very well in the crypto world. Um, and, um, you know, we have 4,100 publicly traded companies uh, in the U.S. alone. 41,000 public companies, if you, in, you know, include every country in the world that has any type of a say in the matter, if you will. Um, then you have only four governments in the world that have bought Bitcoin, okay, or cryptocurrencies, four. Uh, everybody's been talking about El Salvador, but they have like less than 100 coins, okay? Um, the other countries are Bulgaria, number one. I think they have about 213,000 plus coins. Then you have Ukraine, they probably have about 60, 65,000 coins. And then you have El Salvador, about 100. And then you have the country of Georgia and the Caucasus, um, probably less than 60 coins. Okay? That's what the entire, I mean, think about that. These are the only governments and the only companies that have crypto, and we're already at $2 trillion. Now, why would it behoove these companies, majority of such companies and or countries to buy cryptocurrency or to invest in cryptocurrency? And by the way, there's a lot of infighting in the cryptocurrency community, okay, a lot. But what they don't understand is the ones who are fighting and they've been sort of tribal about this, I'm Bitcoin, I'm Dogecoin, etc. Um, is that you're essentially the same body and you're fighting the same, the same enemy, okay? I don't want to call it an enemy, but the same opponent, if you will. Okay, um, so you have you have um, uh, a, a two trillion dollar industry that I think will easily get to twenty trillion, twenty, maybe twenty four, twenty five trillion dollars, because when everybody realizes that merchants, which there is right now about forty eight million merchants that accept. American Express throughout the world. That's just American Express, okay? They're paying between three, three and a half percent to American Express, okay? No reason for that to happen when you have crypto, when you can accept crypto cryptocurrency and pay a small fraction of that, a small fraction of that fee, okay? That benefits businesses. Now, if you are a history buff of any kind, right? You've obviously heard about the Roman Empire, right? The, the Greeks, you've had the Greek Empire, the Byzantine Empire, the Persian Empire, the Ottoman Empire, the Armenian Empire, all these empires that came and went, they all fell because they got too big. When you get too big, you become a monopoly and you get greedy and you say, I can do whatever I want to do. That's when you begin the process of implosion, okay? And that's what's happening in my view right now. These guys can send you a letter, Visa, MasterCard, Microsoft, sort of Discover, can send you a letter and say, oh, by the way, we're just going to raise your rate as a merchant, you know, just a little bit. And nobody's going to stop them, okay? I mean, they're not going to stop each other. It's like the gas stations, right? When one gas station increases the, the per gallon rate by 10 cents, the guy next to him, he's not going to say, hey, you're, you're so bad. He's just going to raise it too. He might raise it by 9 cents, but he's still going to raise it, okay? So the industry is going to raise it with zero collusion, okay? Um, so it's going to benefit companies, merchants throughout the world to buy crypto and hold it, okay? And the way to lessen the supply is gonna be when these publicly traded companies, these governments see that the way we can do that is very simply buy up the supply, price will increase, and as we accept it, we all benefit from it, okay? And at some point, it's gonna, of course, just consolidate and it's gonna be pretty much stable. It's gonna like become a stable coin, but for a long while, it's gonna keep increasing in value. Okay, and like I said, I think it's going for that reason to go to 10x where we are today, and we're going to double 2x gold's market cap, which is 11 and a half trillion dollars. All right, those are the thoughts that I've been having today when it comes to crypto. Until next time, peace and God bless.